And so we're going to take this two liter bottle and cut the top off of it and use it as a nursery to raise wild bladder snails and two different kinds of dayflower along with some aquatic moss. And uh, so we're going to start with some sand. This is the same sand that I've been working with in my recent videos. I'm going to add a fair amount here to give the plants a good place to uh, set their roots. And also, we're going to use this sand as a counterweight to stop the tank from tipping over if it happens to be bumped or anything. And it should do quite well in here. This is my favorite sand to work with. It's free and sourced from a local uh, area. So this sand is a bit wet, and I have rinsed it recently to wash away these small particles, and that prevents it from being cloudy. But now we're going to add some moss. Now this moss is mostly decorative, but it will act as a bit of filtration. And uh, yeah, it's something we can harvest later, and it's just nice to look at. I happen to enjoy this moss a great deal. I believe it's hypnum moss. And now we're adding some lava rock and some local stones that I collected from my own yard, along with a few pieces from the pool pond, which will uh, act as a, uh, a starter source of beneficial bacteria, which is very important for any aquarium, even if you don't have fish. Uh, the snails and worms will also produce ammonia, and the beneficial bacteria will help to keep the water clean. Now we're going to add some nice, clean water to this tank. Uh, this is not tap water. This is not bottled water. This is water that's pumped up from a well underground. And in my experience, this is the same water I use in all of my projects. It's very well. It's almost soft water. It's right around 6.8 pH, and it's pretty good stuff. You can use tap water, city water, or, or bottled water, uh, but you will have to uh, let it air out to remove the chlorine. And even then, you will have uh, trace chemicals. That's right, people drink chemicals all day and they don't even know it. Uh, but I prefer this groundwater. And now we're going to add our plants. We are using two different types of dayflower in this project. Our climbing dayflower and a wild type of dayflower. They are related, but they are different species. The climbing dayflower is on the right and the wild version is on the left. Um, I cannot identify the wild type. <laughs> It could be Asiatic dayflower, but uh, I'm not quite sure yet. We'll have to wait and see how it grows and see if it forms any flowers for us to get a better idea. But I captured this recently from my neighbor's yard, and uh, it's good stuff. It will grow in an aquarium. We've tested it, and uh, it performs almost exactly the same as the climbing dayflower. Uh, but if you've watched my channel, you know that we've been working with climbing dayflower for a number of years. It does really well in jar aquariums. But it does happen to uh, wilt quite easily. The uh, leaves at the lowest level of the stem will wilt. And we typically pluck them and put them into the container. Uh, but now that we've planted our wild type of dayflower, we're going to plant some of our own climbing dayflower in here as well. And I'm including both of these plants to uh, get a good idea how they function in an identical aquarium. You know, I want to compare them against one another in the exact same project. I thought about building two tanks and, you know, letting them both grow separately and then seeing which one does better or how they might differ. Uh, but I thought, you know, why, why not put them in the same exact aquarium and that would give us a better idea of, you know, how they, uh, how they are different from one another. In my uh, current experience, the wild version seems to wilt a bit less, and it seems to grow a lot thicker than the climbing dayflower, which is a bit stringy. If you are one of those people who um, cannot grow plants, uh, I highly suggest you try some dayflower. I could, I could give you some. It's very easy to make cuttings. Uh, almost every cutting will survive, and it can grow just in a jar of water without any issues. The plants don't actually need the sand, but I thought it might help them. For the extra cuttings that we have, I'm just going to put them into the microfauna aquarium there in the background, and we may use them in another project in the future. So here we are. Here's our moss, and you can see the water. It looks cloudy, but that's actually a, a, a lot of bubbles that have clung to the plastic. We're going to use our pipette to uh, clear off some of the sand and debris that has gathered on top of the moss so it's nice and clean. And there we go. 
Now we're going to seed this new world with our wild bladder snails here. And you'll see a few of them, uh, you know, floating around the tank right here. These wild snails were collected recently, and I have yet uh, to mix them with my own bladder snails. I want to keep them isolated for now and to uh, get them breeding in this new nursery. They are breeding and laying eggs in the uh, collection containers, but I want to keep them isolated here for now in something nice. And now we're taking samples from a few of our other aquariums. Uh, the ostracod orb, um, the microfauna aquarium, and some of our tubaflex tanks. Uh, we're adding these samples to kickstart the ecosystem in here with a few, uh, you know, small number of animals for them to get into this new world as the bacteria begin to spread and things start growing. And our, uh, our new seeded cultures here will take hold and we'll have a new ecosystem in this two liter jar. And here we are. This is one of the wild type bladder snails. Um, I don't think that these guys are the same species that we've been raising. I believe these are Carolina Phygia. Uh, not actually, you know, restricted to Carolina, or the Carolinas rather. Uh, but their, their range is actually quite wide, and they are here in Georgia. But uh, I lack the ability to properly identify the species of a bladder snail. It turns out it can be very difficult, and they look very similar. Even trained scientists have trouble with identifying the different species of bladder snails. Uh, and they mainly rely on genetic testing and a few other methods to determine, you know, different species. Uh, but I believe these guys are a different subspecies of Ficella bladder snails uh, because they act a bit differently than my own snails. They prefer to stay near the surface. They like to burrow into mud and substrate like that. Whereas my snails like to just travel all throughout the aquarium and they also move uh, a little bit slower than my snails. And I am going to try to hybridize them eventually, which may or may not work, depending on which species these guys happen to be. But for now, I want to establish a secondary breeding population in this new nursery. And here we have some of our wild type tubaflex worms. Now, I'm not sure of the exact species, but we've been breeding these worms for a about a year or two now. And they are very important for this project. They came with the samples that we added to this nursery. But as you may know from watching my channel, the dayflower has a growth pattern that causes the uh, leaves to wilt as the plant grows tall. The lower leaves will wilt and fall away. So typically we pluck those leaves and throw them back into the aquarium in which the plant was grown. These worms will help, uh, just like earthworms in your backyard. They will chew up the leaves and they'll make a nutritious fertilizer for the plants to use for more growth. Kind of like a recycling system. I've also added a slice of cucumber here to kickstart the ecosystem. You'll see a few of our wild type tubaflex there uh, munching on that cucumber along with some paramecium, maybe some ostracods and some other creatures as well. I will be feeding this tank with one slice of cucumber about once a week and we'll increase the feeding schedule as more and more animals uh, reproduce in this nursery. So there it is, that's our two liter nursery. I'm very proud of this project. It looks great. It's not quite as spooky as I had wanted for a Halloween video, but that's fine. Uh, it looks pretty good and it should accomplish the goals of raising our wild worms and snails and our other plants in this project. So that's it for now. We're going to leave the nursery here on a windowsill to benefit from indirect sunlight until we visit this project again in the future. So this is Bucket Ponds. My name is Terry. Please like, subscribe, and join the Bucket Pond family. We make weekly videos and I'm always out here looking for new wild pets and plants to incorporate into our projects. Thanks for watching, guys.